Now, you were originally uh, a singer and you've chosen uh, this uh, new uh, career in uh, activism on Indigenous issues. And uh, mo uh, most of us who have engaged in activism know it's not for the, you know, faint-hearted, you, you know, you cop, you know, uh, I'm sure you know a lot of, you know, abuse and accusations. Uh, given that, um, why, did, why did you decide to go from, you know, something which, like, singing which is you know obviously uh a very you know uh warm and fuzzy industry and put yourself in the the firing line of uh, currently yeah i guess i went into politics well and, and activism um because while singing is a beautiful thing and is very much a part of who i am um it it also i guess you know i, I separated the activism from the singing and uh, I then I guess watched my mother get into politics. I'm, I'd known for many many years that uh, Indigenous issues were never seen you know seeming to be resolved and I've lived my life um, burying my family members. Um, I've lived with you know death since I was since since a young age, I, I lost my brother to leukemia when I was three, and he he was ten years old. My mother almost died when I was six. Um, you know, apart from those sorts of experiences, just constantly seeing my family die as a result of family violence, alcohol, uh, substance abuse, um, you know, family being locked up, and all those sorts of issues. You know, as well as the fact that I know. Um, growing up an Aboriginal girl and woman, that Aboriginal women are second rate in traditional Aboriginal culture. And having the understanding of traditional culture as well as understanding um, the Western way of doing things and having both those sides of me, you know, understanding both sides as I've grown up has really led me to, um, well, I come from a position where I understand. And I think one of the main issues going on here is the fact that a lot of people just don't understand. They don't understand, um, you know, what parts of Aboriginal culture are affecting Aboriginal people in a detrimental way that haven't been addressed um, by um, governments because governments haven't understood. But also, I think activists, while they had their place um, bringing about equal rights for Aboriginal people in this country, have now gone too far and. Uh, a lot of activists, in fact, who, um, you know, unfortunately for their circumstances are removed from traditional culture, don't understand its impact on the most marginalised in this country and are just as much removed from it um, as many of our po political leaders have been for many, many years. So in my position, I'm obliged, I guess, to speak for those uh, um, who, whose voices haven't been heard. You know, in the Northern Territory, we're still the final frontier. Um, it, it's still it's still only really, you don't really know that much about what goes on in remote communities unless you, you've lived in them or, or spent um, time throughout your life being there in remote communities. And um, so there's been a bit of, a I guess, a blanket over that. And I'm... You know, I can't stand back and watch all this go on knowing what I know and not... Um, be part of making change and having watched my mother go through that process, having seen what she's experienced and understanding her strength in doing that and being part of that and being an Aboriginal woman whose first language is not English, um, become an MP um, and about speaking the truth and what is really going on then you know I, I've had to follow in, in her footsteps but I've also had to follow with the understanding of both cultures and I guess um, a little more, um, you know, I'm a little, I'm a little, I guess, you know, she is, she still holds a very traditional views in some cases. Um, you know, she, she believes that there are some people who, who are capable. Me, on the other hand, um, yeah, there might be those people out there, but my belief is we're much stronger than that. And there are other ways that we can also fight um, for the rights of women and children. And um, it needs to be done in, in, in a way that the rest of the world is going to be able to understand. And so it being that link between the two cultures, I guess, which is important for me to be. I did it. I used to do it with my music. 
now I can do it um, on, on, on a platform of using, you know, activism and fighting for the rights of the most marginalised, which I, th I just don't think it's been done properly. You know, we Aboriginal women have not had our feminist movement. We have had to stand in solidarity with Aboriginal men. We've been told to do so for the rights of Indigenous people against racism. Well, in my view, there are far more people in this country who are prepared to bend over backwards for Aboriginal people than there are racists. So now it's time for our rights to be recognised as women. Um, and now it's time um, for the violence to end for Aboriginal women and children. And so speaking the truth for me is utmost is the, the most important thing that I can do in my life um, because these circumstances have to change. They have to change. I'm sick of burying my family. Uh, just earlier this year, I helped lift my auntie uh, after she collapsed and died in, in a town camp. I, ha I helped family lift her into a police body bag and watch her be taken away. I, I have had to ID, you know, my, my cousin's body after she... Um, had died in, in an alcohol-related car crash. I've had to comfort children who's just lost their mothers. And um, I've had to fight for the right of kids in our family to be given to families that we've chosen, who happen to be, you know, white foster carers that we know well. We've had to fight the system for them to be in their care because the system's turned around and said that, um, their culture is what's more important. Well, currently their culture is absolutely dysfunctional. So until that culture becomes functional again, I would not place children in my family in the care uh, of, of those who are part of a dysfunctional culture. It's as simple as that. Rights of women and children need to come first. Yeah, when you put it like that, it's, it definitely feels like that you feel that you, you know, wouldn't be, you know, having a, you know, good life unless you were trying to, you know, change things. Absolutely. Uh, it, you know, whatever work that I've done, um, whatever projects I've pursued, whatever, whatever it is I've been part of, it's always had to be in such a way that it's somehow contributing to the betterment of, you know, the most marginalised, um, my family. Uh, and I've always, you know, hoped to be, I guess, a positive role model for my people. Um, from back when I was, you know, when I was a teenager performing rap and hip hop with my cousins, you know, young Indigenous fellas, we used to hit the stage and do that, one, because we loved the music, but two, because we wanted to show our peers that there were other things that we could do um, to be positive in our community. And also we wanted to show our community, you know, that not all Aboriginal kids um, are uh, criminals, you know, we 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 wanted to we wanted to be that positive image, and so I guess that's continued on for me in my life, and and I guess being a mother, also there's that aspect, you know, I've always got to be, I've got these young eyes looking at me, seeing how they should be, you know, when they grow up. Uh, my eldest is, it's in fact his birthday today. He's he's 19 today, um, and I have a 16 year old, a 14 year old, and a, and a, a 10 year old stepson. I have four boys, so it's really important um, when you're a parent also to be a positive role model for your kids. Um, so because they're tomorrow's leaders, they're they're the future. They're going to be running the country one day. And obviously the, the feedback that you get uh, on the ground there in Alice Springs encourages you and you were recently uh, re-elected to the uh, Alice Springs uh, Council. The, the, you're on the, the mayor's uh, ticket who was uh, re-elected. So it uh, sounds like that you know, what you're doing there is, you know, it's, it's really resonating with people. Yeah, and, and again, I think, um, you know, I had a landslide vote of over over two two thousand um, uh, first prefer first uh, primary votes, and um, and I was you know six hundred odd votes ahead of the next candidate, uh, which told me that one I stood up for the fact that we need to uh, keep Australia Day. Two, I guess I, I speak like a Territorian, you know, as I as I'd mentioned, for us Territorians we just get on with things. Um, we, we don't like for politics to get in the way of getting on with one another and attempting to solve the really difficult issues. 
Um, you know, we're more no nonsense, no bullshit, no political correctness. We want to get on with things. And, you know, I speak on behalf of white fellas and black fellas in my community. And that's that's really what, you know, resonated with them during the council elections. And, and that's why they voted me in. And, and on a regular basis, I have people come up to me um, congratulating me and thanking me for just speaking the truth and, um, you know, telling me that they voted for me. And I think in this day and age right now with with everything, you know, with, 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 with the lies that are told and the political, through political correctness, people are just sick of being lied to. And, and, and they want the truth to be known. They just want straight talking and, and straight walking too. You've got to walk, you've got to walk that talk at the same time. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.